Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Batman issue number 52. All right, first the story, and then we're going to get into my thoughts on the uh, story. Uh, but before even that, let's talk about the important stuff. Tom King is on scripts, Lee Weeks is on art, Elizabeth Breitweister is on colors, Clayton Cowles is on letters, Weeks and Breitweister on covers, and Carrie Andrews does a variant cover. Really nice one, too. Just saying. So, anyway, check this out. Uh, there's no Batman in this for the most part, except in flashback. Bruce Wayne himself, he's, uh, of course, cheating the, the justice system. He's a vigilante, so what the heck else is new? And it's Gotham City. But he's cheating the system by being um, a juror on what is about to be a hung jury. Uh, he's the only one who's not believing the story as it's presented to the jury. And... Um, He's holding this whole thing up. Meanwhile, it's a case where Batman found evidence that the police didn't about Mr. Freeze. Now, this has to do with the brain temperature of these people, uh, these three women who were murdered. The thing is that the investigators, the, excuse me, the coroners should have been able to pick this up, according to um, Commissioner Gordon in the previous issue. That's that, that we were, we're reminded of that here. Um he, he said that they should have gotten it, but for some reason they didn't. But Batman did later on when he came back. The trick is, what happened in between that time? Excuse me, that time. Um, this is an interesting portion. Now we're going to get into my... Uh, and in the end, uh, he's trying to come up with that. And the one juror who's on there... Because all the jurors are like, listen, Mr. Wayne, the rest of us actually have real jobs. Uh, I've got babysitters who are, you know, held up. And this is very realistic. This is very real. From everything I understand, I've never uh, had to serve on jury duty before. Um, I no longer live in the in the United States, so I imagine I won't. <laughs> but um, it's uh, this is a lot of what I hear from, uh, from friends and family members who have had to serve on jury duty, that this is a lot how the situation goes. Anyway, so what have you here? Um, Bruce Wayne is saying, okay, I can prove my point. And this is the part where you imagine he's going to pull out a batarang and his cowl and show everybody that he's actually Batman. Now, obviously it doesn't happen. We get a, a cut, you know, a cut scene right there. We're literally left on what we imagine is a cliffhanger, but since it's an entire issue, it's clearly not going to be a, a very huge cliffhanger. Uh, this is going to be one of those things where he goes into his side of the story and he really starts to get into it, I'd imagine, in the next issue. Now, the entire time I'm reading this, uh, I'm going to say something that's going to seem bad, but please bear with me. I'm not one of those jerks who just starts lambasting writers and, and artists. So please understand what I'm saying when I say this. When I read this, it makes me wonder how Charles Soule would write this story. Charles Soule is an actual lawyer, all right, past the bar and all that stuff, and he writes an amazing Daredevil story. Even better, he writes a perfect Matt Murdock story. So since we're not on Batman right now, and we're on Bruce Wayne, and it is jury duty, I would love to see his take on this. Uh, in fact, I wonder if maybe, just maybe, Tom King, if he's not already, if he could, you know, behind the scenes, listen, man, I know that, you know, you're a Marvel and I'm a DC, but come on, give me some advice here. What would you do? You know what I'm saying? I would love that. Um, King is former CIA. So, like, you know, he's got his strong points. He does. Now, here comes the pure opinion part of this. Um, I'm going to, I hate doing this, but I'm going to refer back to what Donnie Kate said on my Saturday podcast, podcast number 82. He'd said, um, um, when we're writing stories and when artists are drawing stories, nobody is doing this stuff with the intent of destroying or ruining a character. They're trying to tell what they believe is a good story. That's what it is. So when you go out of your way to make sure that somebody knows that you don't like their story and you start insulting people, it really says a lot about you. Now, I'm actually filling in that last part. He didn't really, you know, say that, but he did indicate that. Um, and yeah, it's something that I've been saying for a while. So the idea that he's destroying Batman is quite, quite the accusation. He's not. Uh, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't happy with the way that issue number 50 went about because we were promised a wedding and we were not given a wedding it was a heck of a freaking thing to do all right uh very bold and i don't think it paid off very well at all 
Uh, I still like what Tom King is doing, but I'm going to give a, a, an elaboration on what I think DC is doing. All right. Because remember, Tom King works for DC. Now, the fact that DC is still happy with King and they haven't taken him off. Because let's be realistic. Dan Didio, all those guys, the DC head honchos, in a heartbeat, they could be, they'd be like, King, you suck. Get out of here. I never want to see your face again. But they haven't. And there's a good reason for that, because they don't believe that. All right. Batman is a very unique character. Batman is, a, for the most part, he's a nobody. He's got zero superpowers. None. Nada. Zilch. Nothing. Big fat goose egg. He's got no powers. Yet somehow he's able to hang with characters like Batman. And a lot of that is because of what Frank Miller has done. All right? We're not Frank Miller. All right? Very few people are Frank Miller. In fact, I'm pretty sure only Frank Miller is Frank Miller. And that's only on his good days. So look. Like... The idea that Tom King is going to be able to pull off a Batman who want and, and that's not the story he wants to tell. And it's not the story that I want to see. I don't want to see Batman going head to head with freaking Superman. That's not the story I want to read. He's going to get beaten up by Wonder Woman. He's going to get beaten up by Superman. He's going to get beaten up by Martian Manhunter. He's not taking the freaking ring off a of Green Lantern. Those are all things that were very cute. They happened. They were cute. Uh, did he ever actually go head-to-head -head against Martian Manhunter? Either way, they were cute little fun stories that I think belonged more of an, in an Elseworlds, or it's just the idea that it was a different universe. It was whatever, man. It was whatever. But the thing is that Tom King doesn't own Batman, okay? You could say that in many regards. Brian Michael Bendis right now owns Superman, okay? In many regards, because he's writing Superman and he's writing... Um, <laughs> action comics and he wrote man of steel all right he's he's the guy he's written so many events arcing events and oh geez again donny cates talked about how hard it is to write these overarching when he was talking about uh nick spencer go check out podcast number 82 to understand when he's talking about all the work that nick spencer had to put into making that secret empire event it wasn't just those 10 issues he was in charge of the whole thing and if writers do something a little bit different and artists does something different you know it's, it's a hard thing to manage an entire event brian michael bendis does it like it's just tuesday you know what i'm saying so um so tom king is still pretty fresh to comics all right he's been writing comics for about as long as he's been doing batman so you know I, I still cut the guy some slack and he's trying to write a more grounded batman which the reason why i'm always be not always but almost always behind him is because that's the batman i want to see I'm used to seeing Batman just dominating everything, and, and I'm not always happy with that. I liked back in the day when Jim Starlin was writing Batman. You know what I'm saying? Um, I asked Jim Starlin, hey, man, what do you think? Go check out that interview. Uh, hey, man, what do you think about the uh, you know the way that the, everybody else did the KG Beast? You know, you meant for him to die right there. What do you think? And he's like, well, you can't expect that people are always going to do things like that, and they're eventually going to resurrect the character and do other things with them. And I agreed with him. Here's something that we didn't discuss. What if somebody took the KG Beast while he was killing the KG Beast? Somebody else has the KGB, uh, KG Beast in space beating up on Sinestro. Do you understand where I'm going with this? While Tom King is writing Batman, trying to make him more grounded, trying to make him more vulnerable, trying to bring out more of the Bruce Wayne character and less of the Batman, which is a noble thing to do. You still got other people writing Batman in space, going head to head with dark gods and, and busting up the source wall and, and going, you know, against the, as an old man, going against the Hawk, Hawk avatar, you know what I'm saying? Who's second only to Barbados and, you know, just like all these crazy things that they're doing with Batman. Batman is everywhere. Nobody is in more comics than Batman. Nobody. Prove me wrong. You'll only say, damn, Bill was right. Because I am. <laughs> and it's not, a, it's not a patting myself on the back thing. It's statistics. Anybody can look them up. I think most everybody here knows. Batman is in more things than Captain America and more than Superman, more than uh, Spider-Man, more than Wonder Woman, more than anybody. He's in more comics than anybody right now and throughout history. All right. So it's not an easy thing. 
to make a, a different version of Batman. And we kind of have to take this comic book and look at it outside of general continuity because everything else is taken in outside of general continuity. Nobody in Justice League is referencing whether it's James Tinney IV who just got off of freaking um, uh, Detective Comics for crying out loud, you know? James Tinney IV, uh, Scott Snyder, Jeff Johns, nobody's taking into account what's happening in Batman. Why should Batman take into account what's happening in all those other books, you know? Um, it doesn't matter if it's All-Star Batman. Like, you remember when All-Star Batman was running at the side by side with um, uh, Batman and uh, Detective Comics? I mean, like, and they were all telling very different stories, sometimes referencing each other, but they're all telling their own independent stories. And here, Tom King is trying to write a very different, very grounded Batman. And when you see Batman in the Justice League, you know, just hanging out and side by side with freaking Sinestro and, and all these super hyper ultra powered guys, yeah, it's kind of hard to, to go back to this comic book and say, oh, so you really have to read this in a vacuum. And I think, like, personally, this is my own personal opinion. I think that Batman should be its own department. You know what I'm saying? In some ways, Superman too, because these are more than just regular properties. These are huge deals, you know? We're not used to seeing uh, Spider-Man go head-to-head -head with Thanos. Even when it happened in the Infinity Gauntlet. It was one of those situations where, where he was very actualized. Peter Parker actually said... You want me to go into space and fight Thanos? Dude, I'm a guy who slings webs and, and catches two-bit thugs in Manhattan. What do you want me to do against Thanos? You know what I'm saying? And it was a very realistic moment. But unfortunately, we never really get to see that with Batman. And I know every single one of us, myself included, could point to a, link, a single time here and there where something like that is said. But then we look at the greater overarching thing where Batman is anywhere that Batman damn well needs to be. He's on the front lines with heavy hitting tanks. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes outlasting those tanks. And I know it's the idea, oh, he's always the first to go. No, he's not. He's not always the first to go. Sometimes he's the last man standing. You know, and I just... I feel like Batman needs to have his own creative division. One person, like like you have Dan Didio, and then you'll have little branches. Here's somebody in charge of Batman and all the different people who are going to be writing Batman, all right? Which means he's going to have a lot of say over the Justice League comic book, too, if Batman's going to be in the Justice League comic book. All of his appearances, you go to this person. You go to that person, whoever that person is. Then you have somebody in charge. Uh, Superman doesn't even need that, you know what I'm saying? But then you have, like, the rest of the comics. But I think that you need to have... Because Batman is such an important integral property, not just to DC, but to comics. He's a staple in comic books, you know what I'm saying? And what the heck is a comic book without staples? And that's actually something that real you know, staples had said, and it just I thought that was funny. Anyway, it's not the, that important. So, look, I feel that... This comic book genuinely needs to be read in a bubble, as if the re entire rest of the DC Universe is happening someplace else, and Gotham is in its own little place. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the way I have to read this. Um, and I think that's the way we, in many ways, need to read this. I think that Tom King is doing a really good job, and I would love to talk to Tom King. You know what I'm saying? I would love to be able to sit down and have a Q&A with him. Uh, live or otherwise, don't care, but I would love to be able to do that and just really dig into his brain and get where he's going with this because I don't think he's going to say anything too different, not too radically different from what I'm saying, that this has to be its own separate entity. Um, this is not the greatest comic book issue in the world, but the reason why in my mind is because I can't I have such a hard time separating Batman from the rest of the DC universe and all the other comic books that Batman is in. It, listen, ever since the 90s, when I was a teenager and I'm running around and, oh, yeah, man, Batman. Actually, I was in the, a teenager mostly in the 80s. But the point is, um, for a couple of those years, I was a teenager, all right, in the 90s. And, and I remember in the 90s us saying, Batman is actually the only Marvel property that Marvel doesn't own. Think about that. Nowadays, it's going to be hard to do, but back in the day, back in the, the 80s and the 90s, the, the superhero comics that had real substance were the Marvel comics. You look at the X-Men, you look at the way that all of those characters were, were handled. They were all very real, very gritty, you know? And that's what we loved about those Marvel comic books, man. The DC was just something else where it's like, okay, cool. 
Cool. And every so often you'd have like the longbow hunters, which would be a lot more grounded and we'd love it. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, Batman was the only character that was actually written so well that it was indistinguishable whether he was a Marvel or a DC. And nowadays, today, I think that Tom King is really hearkening back to those days where Batman is a real person, where we look at him and say, he's just a regular guy. You know what I'm saying? And psh, dude, in, in the prime of my my um my army days, when I was when I was hanging out with the Ranger, I wasn't a Ranger, but I was hanging out when I was hanging neck and neck with the Rangers in the PT test, I know for a fact I couldn't hang out with like Superman and Green Lantern and all those. I wouldn't stand a chance. So Batman, yeah, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? He he's not gonna be much better than a freaking you know, special forces guy. There's only but so much a human being is capable of doing. So, yeah, I, I think that Tom King is really bringing us back to that. And in my heart, I love what he's trying to do. The hardest thing for me, and I think that's for a lot of us, is separating the, the Batman comic from the rest of the DC universe where Batman is in. Yeah, it, he's too integral to the rest of the DC universe. And I think that he has to be moderated. I, that's what I generally believe. If DC did that, I think that we could all enjoy Batman a little bit more. And it will be a process that, how come we're not seeing Batman in the crisis, you know, death of Earth? It's the death of Earth, you know, crisis event, man. Batman should be front and center. No, Batman is back in Gotham saying, I can only really handle Gotham. What else am I going to do? Oh, you guys want some tactical advice? I'm more than happy to help. You want me to man the watchtower while you guys are out there on the front lines kicking butt? I'm more than happy to do that. But I'm just a human being. It's going to take a long, it's going to take a while, longer for most people to transition to, but I think that's what we really need to do to make Batman a little bit more grounded. I, I'm kind of enjoying this, this story. I, I kind of am. And I, and I, and I, I'm just trying to separate within myself, my own little, I don't know, questions, the, the, the divergence between Batman reality and Batman, what the F, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's it. Guys, this was a very long video for a comic book that, you know, I'm not going, whoo about but that's that's real like I, I i read this comic book a couple hours ago about two and a half hours ago and i'm just thinking about it the entire time and thinking what the hell is wrong with batman and this is what i've come to all right guys that's it for me uh professor bill comic book university class dismissed